So here we are, book five of the D.I. Natalie Ward series already. I'm delighted to read today from The Blossom Twins, which is probably my favourite in the series so far. I hope you enjoy it too. The prologue. 17-year-old Kerry's heart beats a frantic rat-a-tat-tat. This is definitely where she left Isabella, on the large grassy bank opposite Sunmore Hall next to the Triumphal Arch. They'd arrived early to grab the spot and she'd been sitting on a jumper, a smile on her face. Isabella, Kerry calls. Her shout is instantly suffocated by the crowd around her, which leaps to its collective feet with a mighty roar as the main attraction, the boy band Blasted, takes to the stage. Hoops, catcalls, whistles and screams lift into the darkened evening sky, which only minutes before was filled with an enormous murmuration of starlings swooping over the illuminated stage as the crowd waited, the air damp with expectation and perspiration. She's clutching the cans of Pepsi purchased from the drinks tent only 30 metres away. Where the hell is Isabella? Her head swings left and right, sweeping along the grassy bank in case her sister has moved to an even better vantage point, but she can't spot her. She pushes past an exuberant foursome, girls her own age in matching t-shirts emblazoned with the group's logo, now leaping up and down and singing along to the opening bars of Blasted's latest hit. One of them is waving a glow, a glow stick like a frenzied conductor. Kerry grabs the girl's arm and pulls on it, attracting her attention. Have you seen my sister? She was sat here, next to you, she yells. The girl shakes her head and turns back to watch the act, who are now strutting up and down on stage, encouraging their fans to join in with the song. Kerry moves in and out between sweaty bodies, all the while hunting for her 14-year-old sister in a pink t-shirt and ripped jeans. She'd no idea so many people would attend a free concert at Sunmore Hall. Thousands of people have poured onto the manicured lawns behind the hall, most of them crammed directly in front of the elevated stage. It's impossible to spot anyone in her, to, close to her in the crowd ahead. Still, she moves forward, hands clenching what were icy cold cans, but which have now warmed. There's no reason for Isabella to have left the spot where they were sitting. It isn't in her nature to suddenly take off. That's one of the things she loves about her sister. She's reliable and compliant, more so tonight, because it's thanks to Kerry she's been able to come and watch her favourite band. She spins around and tries the opposite direction. Thoughts like congested traffic jam up one behind the other. Maybe her sister has gone to the toilets, moved closer to the stage or spotted a friend and joined them. Each suggestion is rejected. Isabella wouldn't do any of those things. What should she do next? Return to their original place and wait in case she turns up? Another thought bumps the others from her mind. She'll ring her. Kerry places the cans down on the grass, reaches for her phone in her back pocket and then dials the number. She presses her phone hard to her ear and sticks a finger in the other and is relieved to make out ringing. The relief is short-lived. Isabella doesn't pick up and Kerry berates herself for her own stupidity. Isabella can't possibly hear Ed Sheeran's shape of you ringtone, not with everyone now joining in with Blasted and singing at the tops of their voices. Bodies merge with bodies, so now all she sees is a giant dark monster. Pick up, Isabella. It's hopeless. Her sister will be engrossed like everyone else here. She'll be singing along. She loves this track. Isabella will return. She can't miss the massive stone archway modelled on some ancient historic archway in Greece or France or somewhere. Kerry doesn't care what it is. All she cares about is seeing Isabella standing in front of it again, like she had been throughout the warm-up act. She's about to ring off when a flashing in the thick bladed grass only a few centimetres away to her right catches her eye. The mobile phone lights up again and she shuffles forward, swooping on it before it can be damaged. She stands up, aware of bodies pressing against hers, bouncing along to the music as if together on a ginormous trampoline, trying to take her with them, and she resists, sticking elbows into their sides as she recognises the pink spotted case and stares at the screensaver. It is the face of her kid sister, grinning goofily. Why is Isabella's mobile lying in the grass? The lyrics sung by those around her assault her ears like some doomsday warning. You're gone, gonna miss you forever. Chilled blood washes through Kerry's veins. Something terrible has happened to her sister. The Blossom Twins. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.